All right, let's get to the next game, and that was uh, Tennessee at Alabama. Uh, Bama did win this one, 34 to 20. Uh, I got the point here. Um, Matt, I'm going to turn it over to you. But first, all, I, all I'll say to to sort of set things up is this was a game of two halves. One team yeah. showed up one half. Yeah. <laughs> one team showed up another half. And, you know, and and the, the team that showed up uh, didn't show up in the other half. So a- anyway, what what are your what are your thoughts? What you got? Wes, I'm going to do an impression. You ready for this? What's that? OK, go for it. <laughs> we really do hate it we really do hate it oh my god oh my god i don't know what happened here but my boys oh my boys just like i said battered ball syndrome is a real thing and it showed up in hurricane force this weekend um that was probably one of the better halves that we've seen tennessee play this season I, they came out in that first half and i was like what oh, yeah. what 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 is, what is this where are we at um, you know, Joe Milton looked like, uh, like, like a God and I'm like, okay, here we go. Finally, we've uncorked it. We can actually play some football. And then the second half started and Bama made some adjustments and they just dominated UT in the second half. And I don't know what happened. The offense couldn't get anything going. Um, Milro might be the guy. He looked like a completely different animal in the second half too. I mean, he finished with uh, you know, over 200 yards of of offense and two touchdowns. I mean, he looked pretty good um, through most of that particular game. I mean, Bama put up almost 400 yards of offense, and it didn't look bad offensively. It's just we couldn't do anything. They scored 27 straight unanswered points in the second half. Mm-hmm. Um, play calling for Tennessee was very suspect. There were a lot of situations where we find ourselves in like third and eight, third and nine, and we're running a little, you know, drag play right up the center of the gut, and it was just – God, there was a lot going on there. Um, it, this this is another stat that that I wrote down that I wanted to mention too. Tennessee since um, uh, since uh, when was the last one? Oh crud, I forgot. Oh, since no, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, oh, since beating Bama last year. Since beating Bama last year. There we go. Tennessee is one and four in their last five road games, and that's a bad look. That's a really bad look. That only win that they got was against Vandy. Uh, it's just. We don't play well on the road. We got to go on the road this weekend against Kentucky. That's got me nervous. Um, <clears throat> and I do want to go ahead and throw throw this out there. Uh, there were a lot of people all over Twitter complaining about the officiating in this game. Um, and I will be the first one to say that I agreed with a lot of this. There was a lot of really egregious, really bad calls. Um, and yes, they did seem one-sided, a bit one-sided. Um, there were several holding calls on Bama's offensive line where they didn't call them at all. And you're just like, how are you not calling that? My 86-year-old grandmother could see that that was a hold. And and there was just a lot of really bad calls. But Hold on, Matt. Jesse's calling me. What? Um, yeah, I can't believe he would say that either. Yeah. Well, you guys, uh... I'm just kidding. Go wow. Go ahead. Wow, yeah. wow Wes. Um, but – the thing is, is you can't give up 27 unanswered points and then expect to blame it on the refs. You just can't. Um, yes, you, t- there were some very questionable calls in that game, but that doesn't negate the fact that all three of our running backs, that three-headed monster running backs that we have, were completely bottled up in, in this game. They were, and you can't yeah. excuse that. Second half, Bama made adjustments. And Bama played lights out in the second half. And long story short, Tennessee loses. Um, I am curious as to how Tennessee is going to bounce back from here. Uh, granted, two losses in the season, especially this late in the season, is really not that bad. But it makes you worry because you're like, how are they going to respond? Are they going to be able to beat Kentucky? God knows we're going to probably struggle with Missouri. Um, you're going to have a couple. And Georgia's still got to come up to Neyland this year, too. So there's there's a lot of football left to play. Now, all that being said, Bama, like you said, looks like they're starting to make that adjustment, starting to find their feet. Um, that could be dangerous, especially going into the second half of the season. Um, so, you know, Saban showed why he's got all those national titles, excuse me, and why he has all the wins that he does and why he's one of the greatest coaches to ever coach the sport. Um, so, you know, I will I will doff my cap to the, to the tide. We got outplayed the second half. It is what it is. Um, although, on a personal note, I'm going to say this one little thing, and then I'll, I'll, I'll shut up about it. Uh, Jermaine Burton is a piece of garbage. Full stop. He's he's a piece of trash. I mean, uh, he, there are there. He's just he's a bad human. 
he kind of puts his uh his um lack of discretion shall we say uh on display almost every week um he really so, does and it's and Bama it's, fans don't really even justify it they're like no, yeah we don't like him either no <laughs> they just kind of roll with it and i get it i mean the kid can play some football but jeez right He's it just, is amazing what success will make you overlook and not necessarily that they're again not that they're justifying it but you know it's yeah i mean between between kicking a guy off of you after he tackled you in the end zone with with both cleats which cleats with both cleats. Yeah, yeah. that was clear i was shocked they didn't throw a flag on that but they didn't yeah uh, yeah. And, you know, and then yeah. and then decking a co-ed after the Tennessee Bama game last year. But it's Jermaine yeah. Burton. It's fine. Now, He's I know Bama fans we will, don't reference, will reference the uh, the punch of the uh, ten of the by the Tennessee oh, player. Give me a uh, no, but come on. But well, yeah, yeah, let's definitely be fair, because there's no way he was trying to punch the guy in the head. It was very apparent that the to... guy wasn't down and he was trying to punch the ball out. I mean, well, that was boy, that just looked like a regular football play to me. A, a, but, every Bama fan in the country was convinced for a fact that he was trying to punch that guy in the face. And I can tell you something. If he had been trying to really punch him in the head, he would have got his head. Right. Well, not to mention, and, and I say this every time we talk about a fight on the field, I'm like, the, the guys are wearing helmets. That's stupid. Why would you want to hurt your knuckles? Anyway. Um, I know people get caught up in the moment, but you know, and I'm not a Tennessee fan and I'm, so I'm not trying to justify stuff. I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, that was definitely just a football play. As a Georgia fan, I wasn't really sure who to pull for this one. Like I was, I found myself torn as the game went along. I'm like, oh, that's kind of that was a great play. Oh no, that was a great play. Like who do who do I go for here? Like because there there are scenarios. Obviously, it helps us in the East if Tennessee loses. But then let's say that we make it through the East, and I'm not necessarily sure if I want to play Bama in the in the SEC championship because. Bama's going to do Bama things and they're going to look like they struggle throughout the season. And then they're going to play on. a great, yeah. a great game when it counts. So um, anyway, so we'll, we'll kind of, you know, have to feel that out as things go to, obviously we just got to win games, but uh, I felt like this was a microcosm of Alabama's season, like starting off slow and figuring things out and, you know, and, and, and looking confused out there and then getting progressively better as the, as the game went along. Like I said before, definitely a tale of two halves. Um, questionable decisions by Tennessee going for it on fourth down. Not yeah. just the fact that they went for it, but the play calls that they had. Like some of them were, you know, like lining up in the shotgun. And all these long developing plays, plenty of time for the defense to to get into the backfield and stop you behind the line. And I, I don't just, know why we didn't throw on a couple of those fourth downs too. I was like, Milton's not looked bad today. Why don't you air it out a little bit? But they right. – I wasn't necessarily mad at going for it on fourth down. I was more, you know, questioning like what in the world is that play call for fourth down anyway. So, uh, like I said, uh, I I know there's some questionable calls by the refs as well, but the offensive play calling wasn't doing them any favors either, especially in the second half. So, um, and obviously the scoop and score was just the backbreaker that just sort of ended it. I had turned that, I had turned that bleep off uh, to that point (laughs) because Because they were winning. Because here's what happened. I I was in, where was I at? I was in the car. Uh We were driving back from somewhere through the entire first half. So I didn't Uh watch the first half. I was just looking at things. Oh, I was at the Houston County game. That's where I was. I watched just the notifications through the first half. Uh I got home right at halftime. I was like, all right, let me watch the end of this game and beat the crap out of Bam for a second year in a row. Mm. and then about midway through the third quarter i was like i must be the problem i closed my laptop and i didn't go back to watching the rest of the game i just watched updates on my phone it was it was it was god awful i actually had a student come up to me this week and they said so mr mr fortson how do you feel about taking that l against bama i said it's no different than any other year (laughs) we've beat them once in the last 27 years i don't know what you want from me i mean it is what it is. Let's hope we can get them next year. We I did on. like what, what Peyton Manning said about the game beforehand. Oh. <laughs> He's just like, you know, yeah, Peyton really can't, him a little bit of bulletin yeah, really can't remember a, a, a game where, uh, where, you know, Tennessee didn't, uh, didn't do well against Bama. You know, it's really been lopsided ever since 2022. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. He's, he makes a solid point though. We looked, it was good last year, not yeah. this year. Anyway, um, before we get out of here, uh, obviously, Jesse did leave a, a note here. She said, thank God the combination of a cigar and scotch after a game just felt right. Happy third Saturday in October. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Um, she, she enjoyed this year's a lot le- a lot more than last year's. A lot more, yeah. Uh, 